Hi, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Earlier this week came out the chapter 2 of the Inside Remarkable 2 blog and uh, this time it thankfully brings out some more information and a little bit more interesting stuff especially regarding the user experience, what the journey was, where the device currently is and what we have to look forward to. So let's check that out really briefly. I think the article is a breath of fresh air especially when compared to the chapter 1. This is more in with what the Remarkable 2 users are interested to hear. And it's precisely what they're talking about. The members of the team who are responsible for the designing and development of the user experience on the Remarkable 2, they are talking about their vision and where they come from, where they are and what they're going towards. So actually this is something that helps understand the mindset of the Remarkable as a company, where they want to go, what it is that they are trying to do. The art the article actually is quite useful because it solidifies that Remarkable's vision is quest for simplicity. So that's basically what they're constantly trying to do. Simplify as much as possible and actually improve the product by simplifying it and not adding new features. Generally speaking, I agree with that quite a bit and I salute that quite a bit as well. However, I think a little bit of caution regarding oversimplifying things should be exercised because you could end up with too simple of a device and miss out on opportunities that are just within the grasp of your hand. As far as the user experience goes, I really have no problems whatsoever. I really like how the uh, simplification went from version 1 to version 2. Uh, that really works perfectly. And basically transitioning from uh, buttons to gestures, gestures as long as they work fine, I don't have a problem with that either. So all of these things are good. So I think that quest for simplification Great. Their main focus seems to be um, a distraction-free device. Fine. I'm also on board with that very much so. As you know, I don't like front lights, I don't like LEDs, I don't like notifications, so another check, really, really like that as well. This is where I have a bit of a problem. Um, for three years now, yes, uh, Remarkable and Remarkable 2, since they're shared the operating system, they are a paper tablet type of or note taking type of experience. Great, fine. However, if you have the ability to load PDFs and to load EPUBs and all of those things, I don't think that it is a distraction to have the functionality to be able to add bookmarks, organize your bookmarks within the document, highlight text, not with a marker, but with a touch and select the word and create a highlight that's searchable in the table of contents, add annotations, typed annotations to the highlighted text, again, searchable within the annotations. I think those things are not distractions and it would simply fit into the existing mentality and functionality and the vision of the Remarkable 2. It's simply a missing feature at the moment. As far as I'm concerned, I'm totally on board with what they're saying here in the article, but I think that some things are definitely still missing and they could be easily added and they would improve the overall experience quite a lot. After the talking about the simplicity, quest for simplicity, then they talk about the touch interfaces and the challenges about the transition from the physical buttons to touch gestures. It's actually interesting for people who don't know how that works. It's a good read. I think they struck a nice balance of not going too technical, but still actually, you know, tickling your interest. But then at the end of the article comes the interesting part for me, which I think is valuable because uh, they are adamant that the Remarkable user experience is far from finished. And they go on further to say, I think that Remarkable users have a lot to look forward to. And we get so many ideas and feature requests from the remarkable community and we have so many ourselves it's going to be so interesting seeing people's reactions as the user experience continues to evolve i can't wait so i can't wait either because the team has proven when they roll up their sleeves and they're free to actually start uh, implementing things and working full on steam ahead on the user experience really, really good stuff has happened. Now, granted, things have been quite dormant <laughs> uh, since January 2020, but then again, you had uh, production and preparation for the Remarkable 2, launching of a new product, and you had COVID-19 and lots of other things. So 
I'm actually hopeful that this last quarter of this year is going to bring something new and some welcome changes and refreshments in not just the user experience, but hopefully in the functionalities of the Remarkable platform itself. So those are my two cents. I like the article. I like where the blog is taken a turn. I really do like that they are stating that things will continue to develop and they want to develop things further. Of course, it's probably going to take quite a bit of time, but um, I hope it comes a little bit quicker than the pace that we've had in the first half of the year. And I hope that we see some of the very needed refreshments and functionality updates uh, in the Remarkable platform, since those updates could very easily elevate the uh, Remarkable platform from a simple note taking device, granted a really good one, to a more encompassing device and more kind of overall useful device that you can actually finish all of your work related stuff on the Remarkable. I really wish that would happen because it would turn it into an even more productivity oriented and professional tool. So that's something that I'm hoping for. We'll see. Only time will tell. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay safe and see you in the next video. Bye.